Miss Amber? I'm done babbling. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kingdom Kids. Um, today's object lesson is uh, pretty simple. You probably have this a lot of this stuff around your house. We're talking about Queen Esther and our purpose. Um, a little background information for uh, Esther before she became queen. Not only was she a Jewish woman, which wasn't really um, uh, a happy thing for the Persian Empire. Uh, they didn't like the Jews very much, but she was a Jewish woman. But on top of that, Esther wasn't born into royalty. She was a regular woman. And also she was raised by her cousin Mordecai because her parents had died. So not only was she not royalty from birth and she was of, an, of a nationality that wasn't very popular in the country, but she was uh, in essence an orphan. She was raised by her family member. Um, and I know that there are a lot of us out there that don't have our moms and dads. Maybe we're raised by a cousin or an auntie or grandparents or something like that, um, brother or sister. And so we would normally in that situation, we probably feel like maybe we, we don't have a purpose or the purpose isn't that great, you know, because I mean, I'm pretty sure it would be a sad feeling to grow up without your mom and dad. Um, but luckily, God gave Esther a wonderful family member that was stepped up and took care of her and raised her as one of his own, even though it was his, her cousin. And she didn't live in the palace. But when uh, King Xerxes needed a new queen, um, Esther found favor uh, with God and with Xerxes and Xerxes made her queen and put her in that position and when it came to uh, saving the king's life Esther was in the proper position you know Mordecai was able to inform Esther that uh, King Xerxes life was in jeopardy and therefore she was able to warn the king and save his life and uh, Xerxes was very grateful to Mordecai for that but she was also, as Mordecai said, he found out that um, the Jewish people's lives were in danger. And he told her, maybe God put you in this uh, position as queen for this very moment in time. Not only did you move up in life, God gave you favor. And uh, and as you're now in a palace, right? And like we were talking about with Mrs. Jenny, think all the wonderful clothes and food and furniture and all that stuff. It's very nice, but it's a very heavy burden. You're responsible for a lot of things. And here you are. Yeah, she's got a crown and some beautiful clothes and the king loves her. But now she's the one that's supposed to be the person to speak up to save her people, to make sure they don't die, right? Um, so that's a very heavy situation, especially since you can't just walk into the king and talk to him. That could get you killed if he's in a bad mood. You know, that's very rude. The king has the power. The king says, yes, I want to talk to you. So she had to take some time. She asked for um, Mordecai and for the Jewish people to pray and fast with her while she did that as well and prepared to go see the king to ask to spare the, the Jewish people. So I'm sure that while Esther is going through all this stuff, she's probably thinking and wondering about her purpose in life and talking to God like, God, why would you choose me? And what should I do? And how do I help the people around me? God raised her to a, a wonderful place as uh, far as like being in the royal courts, but it wasn't just so she can enjoy being the queen or anything like that. It was to help save God's people, use her position, use her purpose for not only herself, but for a bunch of other people. So today's lesson, our object lesson is to talk about a few items. Now these aren't humans, um, but they were made by humans and the inventors that made them actually created them for a different purpose than what we use them for today. So I'm sure people are quite, especially our children are quite familiar with the Play-Doh. Play-Doh. What do we make out of Play-Doh? What are some cool things you make out of Play-Doh? Mrs. Jessica, have you played with Play-Doh? I'm sure you have. You got three babies and it's lots of fun. And sometimes you can make something beautiful and other times you can just beat it up. It's okay, you know, squeeze it, get some stress out, get some creativity out. But it helps us. It's fun, right? Mrs. Yes. Jessica, what is something you've made with Play-Doh? Well, um, 
when I would play with the kids, we would make like little, um, little like dough foods and thank God that Play-Doh is non-toxic because they would actually eat it. So we would yes. make food out of Play-Doh. <laughs> yes. Mrs. Jenny, what have you, you, what is some purpose that you have given to Play-Doh in your shaping life? Um, we make people like snowman people. I'm making a person too. I'm making Esther. Making a, we make snowman people out of Play-Doh. And yeah. uh, It's fun, right? No, snowman yeah. people and snakes. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun, right? Yeah, I love Plato. Do you think this was the inventor's original purpose for this? Was it mm -hmm. to make things to shape and play and get creative and all that good stuff? Make sure it's not toxic, so kids don't know when they eat it, they don't get sick. Do you think that's their original purpose? I want to say yes, but I know the answer is no. You're correct. <laughs> it's easy to think that Play-Doh obviously must have been invented to play with, right? I mean, look at it. Got great colors, squishy, you know, can do all kinds of stuff out of it. Get the little Play-Doh machines and make ice creams. But really, Play-Doh was made by a soap maker. Okay. Her name is Cleo Mc, uh, McVickers. Do you know oh. why she ended up inventing Play-Doh, the squishy dough? Why? Because during the time, wallpaper was the rage for the houses, not just paint, but wallpaper. And they thought that the stickiness of this and the texture and the squishiness would be a great wallpaper cleaner. So if your wallpaper got dirty, they would take it and they would smush it. And, you know, that way, instead of scrubbing it and messing your wallpaper up, you have this wonderful squishiness. But yeah, it didn't work out too well. I mean, it, it worked out. But at the same time, could you imagine all the Play-Doh you would have to do to go clean your walls? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not a very good way to clean it, right? So they came up with a little bit better way to clean wallpaper. But that's originally what she created it for. But as time went on, they found out, hey, yeah, you have a product. It's not really a good purpose for what you originally made it for, but we can alter it. And they did a little bit of tweaking, you know, added some wonderful little colors and they market it as a play creative pastime for kids. So that was something that was made by an inventor, a person that thought that, hey, maybe I got a really cool wallpaper cleaner, but it turned out does the purpose isn't really that great for it, but it still has a purpose. Kids can use it. And it's, it, it's non-toxic. It says right there, non-toxic. It's made out of wheat. By the way, you guys can uh, look up recipes to make your own homemade Play-Doh. Can. But if not, they're two for a dollar at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a video on the yes. game. Mrs. Jenny has done Play-Doh for the kids and she ah. makes slime and all kinds of stuff. And it's really cool. I'm the right. messy one out of the bunch. Yeah, that's okay. My, my son thinks he likes to be messy and then he gets his hands dirty. He's like, I need to wash up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I got another one for you. I'm sure you guys have seen this and your toys or the packages your parents get. You hear that? That's bubble wrap. This is bubble wrap. Yeah, what do we bubble use wrap. bubble wrap for? Sticking up. Huh? Sting. Popping. Yeah. <laughs> Once we get our package, yeah. And oh. sometimes us uh, adults are rude and be like, you know how much that costs? Save that. I'm going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for popping. And we use it to wrap things. So like if we're moving stuff, we can help cushion it, right? So it doesn't get broken in transit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that was the original invention intended and in, uh, used for it? No. no. What do you think it was for? What do you think if bubble wrap, what we use it for to pop it and to pack things and stuff, if that wasn't the, because it seems like, like an obvious thing, right? Like, of course it would be. What do you think it was for? Why do you think they invented this? What was their original purpose when they made this? 
different. Um, yeah. Since the Play-Doh was made for cleaning, like as a cleaning product, I'm going to say this one was probably meant to clean something too. This Jenny? Maybe like a scrub. Maybe like a painting thing because it gives texture. I don't know. I guess that's what I use it for. I don't you know. guys are a little bit closer to it. And it, it does have a little bit of relation with the Play-Doh and, it, and you're hitting on the texture. Now, it wasn't to clean wallpaper like Play-Doh, but it was used for its texture because they thought it would be a cool textured wallpaper. I think that's a pretty dumb idea because if your guests just lean up against your wall, they're going to pop it. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they originally made it because they thought it would be a cool design for wallpaper. So we have our Play-Doh that was meant to clean dirty wallpaper. So maybe we can use some Play-Doh to clean our bubble wrap. <laughs> 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 and we got it for our, you know, come in and be like, oh, look at all those bubbles. That's so nice. Where'd you get that? And like, oh, I didn't mean to break your wallpaper there. But, <laughs> but no, it was, it was meant to be a textured wallpaper. Do you know how it became a packing product and what we sit here and we love to pull out of packages and pop it now? That creation, that invention had to wait. For, this invention, the bubble wrap, had to wait for another invention for us to use it the way we use it now. Along came the 80s with the computers and they had to wrap the computer supplies and everything in bubble wrap because they figured out it's not a very good wallpaper but it is perfect for electronics. So that's how we use it today. <laughs> and his name was, let's see, it was a combination. It was between a, a man named Alfred Fielding and Mark Chauvinus. I think that's how you say his last name. It looks kind of French. I'm not sure. I'm Ooh. sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then look, see, I have a note here. And I have a note here. This is for my Play-Doh purpose, and this is for my wallpaper purpose. But also, can somebody tell me what the purpose for the sticky note was? To make my life better. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> what was it for? You know? To leave notes, reminders. You know, it's funny. This Label. might make you giggle, too. This might make you giggle, too. Um, no. The person that made sticky notes, uh, so Spencer Silver, right? Yeah. Um, he was trying to create a super strong adhesive, kind of like super glue, but it didn't work. <laughs> okay. Instead, it, it's really uh, weak. But the good thing is, is he found out it goes well with paper and uh, it leaves, you know, don't leave any residue or anything behind so you can remove it cleanly and uh, you put it in different sizes and hey, look, you got all kinds of reminders. You can mark your books, you can draw pictures, you can prep for kingdom kids like I did by using the sticky note about the sticky note inventor. <laughs> <laughs> I love sticky notes. They're my favorite office. Books. I love them too. They come in different colors and shapes and sizes. I found some that look like hearts. It's really cool. Yeah. Just, what was the point of me talking about all this stuff? Do we remember? Purpose. Our pur purpose. Yeah, purpose. And our purpose may not always start out the way we intended it, but that doesn't mean it's no good. That's why it, it, it develops and it morphs and it finds its way. Some ideas don't come to light. Maybe, you know, it's just a bad egg from the beginning and hey, hey, at least you tried. But there's still a purpose. The purpose was to clean some wallpaper. But now our purpose is to play with it. I think it's more popular that way. Purpose was to be a cool wallpaper. I think it's better for technology the way we use it now. Somebody wanted to make super glue, but apparently they had to wait <laughs> for super glue. <laughs> and so we just had really cool reminders. Just like... Esther, you know, her purpose, she, I don't know what she thought her purpose was beforehand. She, she didn't have her parents. She wasn't royalty. She was being raised by her cousin. Uh, she was a woman. She was a woman of a nationality that wasn't very popular in the kingdom they lived in. So I'm pretty sure she was like, God, what is my purpose? Maybe my purpose is to, I don't know, grow up and have a family and try and raise them. And God said, well, that's what you think your purpose for your life is. But I actually have a different purpose for you. And he elevated her to the status of queen. 
And not only did she live in a better lifestyle, um, but she was in a position to save her people, which is very, I'm very, very grateful. And so much so that they have, they do have a, a festival um, to commemorate uh, them being saved by the help of Queen Esther and Mordecai and God. Um, so just because we start out thinking a purpose for something is this or that or, or a person, maybe we have our parents, sometimes our parents think that they know what our purpose is in life. And maybe you feel a little push towards fulfilling what you think their purpose is for you. Um, I know plenty of people that have ended up growing up and getting into jobs and careers they don't really like because they've been told by a lot of people that that's their purpose. But the fact of the matter is God created you and he knows exactly why he created you. So the best one to find out what your true purpose is, is from God because he gives us all special talents. And yes, those talents can be used in many different ways with different people, but there's a specific reason why you're created and there's a specific purpose for you. And God wants to give us better things and have us have a good life, you know, not have to worry about our food and our clothes and being loved or safe or anything like that. But sometimes we have to realize that our purpose is also for a bigger purpose. And it's not just to give blessings to God, to give blessings to us, but so we can be a blessing to others. Um, so just, I know it's really hard and I know there's a lot of options out there growing up and you're still young and you have time, uh, but use this time to grow closer to God because he really knows what he wants for you and he doesn't want to lead you anywhere bad. Um, so it, there's nothing wrong with listening to people's suggestions. God uses people to talk to us, to point us in the direction he wants mm -hmm. us to go. So don't ignore them, but don't beat yourself down if that's what you feel like you're not really made to do. It'll come and God will lead you if you trust them. So that's my lesson. God loves you. And so do we. Mrs. Jessica has your deeper Bible. So stay tuned.